Let's get started on today's notes over systems of linear inequalities word problems. This is a pretty difficult topic for most students, most Algebra 1 students. So because we're dealing with word problems, I've got a list of key words or several lists of key words that should remind you of what symbol you would use if you were to see that particular word or phrase. So let's get started on number one. Catherine works no more than 20 hours each week. Babysitting earns her $8 an hour and working as a hostess earns her $10 per hour. She needs to earn at least $180 each week to save for the car she wants. Write and solve a system of linear inequalities that displays all possible combinations of hours she could work at each job to reach her goal. So we're dealing with a lot of information here. The first thing we know is that Catherine works no more than, no more than 20 hours each week. No more than. Babysitting earns her $8 per hour. Working as a hostess earns her $10 per hour. She needs to earn at least $180 each week to save for the car she wants. Okay, so we're dealing with two different things here. The variables that we're dealing with are babysitting hours and hostess hours. So let's just let x equal babysitting hours and y equal hostessing hours. We know that she can work no more than 20 hours each week. So the number of hours she babysits plus the number of hours she spends hostessing needs to be less than or equal to 20 because she can work no more than 20 hours. Now, if babysitting earns her $8 an hour, then that's eight times X. Hostessing earns her $10 per hour. That's 10 times Y. She needs to earn at least, now this little uh, expression right here represents what she earns. She needs to earn at least, meaning what she earns needs to be greater than or equal to 180. So now we've got our system of equations and we need to graph it. The first thing we're going to do is convert each linear inequality into slope intercept form. So I'm going to get y all by itself. So if you want to stop the video right now and convert each of these linear inequalities into slope intercept form, it would be a good time to do that. So hopefully you've already done that and your Inequalities are y is less than or equal to negative x plus 20, and y is greater than or equal to negative 4 over 5x plus 18. And now we're going to graph these inequalities. So let's graph this first one. And because it's a system, I'm going to use two different colors so you can see the overlapping shaded region. So let's graph the system. Y is less than or equal to negative X plus 20. I know my Y intercept is at 20 and I know my slope is negative one. So you could also, if you didn't want to convert to slope intercept, you could graph by intercepts, which we've done that before. Plug in zero for X to find your Y intercept, plug in zero for Y to, to find your X intercept. You could graph that way. This is just the way I'm choosing to show you. So because my slope is negative one, I do know that my x-intercept is going to be the same. It's going to be 20. My line is going to be solid. And I'm shading below. So I'll just shade below. And notice I'm sticking to the quadrant 1. This is the first quadrant. And why do you think that is? Because if on our x-axis we have babysitting hours, and on our y-axis we have hostessing hours, will we ever have a negative amount of each? No. So we're stuck in quadrant one where x and y values are always positive. So now let's look at the next inequality. I have a y-intercept of positive 18 and my slope is negative 4 over 5. So as you can see, I'm counting by twos on my y-axis. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create an equivalent fraction to be negative 8 over 10. And I'm going to go down one, or I'm sorry, two, four, six, eight, and then I'm going to go over two, four, six, eight, ten, right there. 
then two, four, six, eight, then two, four, six, eight, ten. And now I've got some points and I can just connect these. And then this one is y is greater than or equal to. So that's everything of above this line. Y is greater than or equal to. So because this is a system of linear inequalities, and I'm actually going to zoom in, it's a system of linear inequalities. This right here is my double shaded region. This is this area right here, and anything on those two solid lines is going to show you all the possible combinations of hours she could work to reach her goal. So let's come up with two possible combinations. What are two possible combinations? Well, I have a combination right here. That's super duper easy. They both intersect right there. They're on solid lines. That works. That would be 10 hours of babysitting and 10 hours of hostessing. Let's just write that as an ordered pair. But we know that X represents babysitting, Y represents hostessing. What else? What's another one? What about my Y intercept right here? She could spend zero hours babysitting and 18 hours hostessing, that would get her to reach her goal. What about, let's see, 415 up in here, about right there, 415, that would work, four hours babysitting, 15 hours hostessing. Now, what you can always do is go to Desmos, and you can plug in your inequalities, just as we saw them in the very, very beginning. So I'm in Desmos and I'm in the graphing calculator portion and I can just type in X plus Y and then what I would do is go down here to this little keyboard and then I would click on this little guy right here is less than or equal to 20 and it'll graph it. And then I can create a new one, a new expression, 8X plus 10Y is greater than or equal to, right there, 180. And then what I can do is zoom out, zoom in, and you can see this kind of makes a lot more sense, or a lot of students prefer this because you can really see the possible combinations. Right there, I can click on that and it'll show me that ordered pair. It'll show me this ordered pair. It'll show me this ordered pair. And you can just see it a little bit better. Okay, so that's a really good option. So let's go back to number two. Number two, Clay sells chips and sodas at the concession stand. He makes 50 cents profit on every bag of chips he sells and $1 profit on every soda he sells. He wants to sell at least 35 items and earn at least $30 every time he opens the concession stand, right? And solve a system of linear inequalities that shows all possible combinations of the number of sodas and chips he could sell to reach his goal. So he's selling chips and sodas. He makes 50 cents profit on every bag of chips. He makes a dollar profit on every soda. He wants to sell at least 35 items and earn at least $30 every time he opens a concession stand. So this is a lot of information. And let's first identify our variables. What two things are we talking about here? sodas and chips. So let's let x equal sodas, y equal chips. And I'm strictly dealing with x and y because we are definitely graphing these. And now let's write a system of equations. So the easiest thing that I see is that he wants to sell at least 35 items. So the number of sodas plus the number of chips needs to be at least 35. That means it needs to be greater than or equal to 35. And then he needs to earn at least $30. Okay, well, the profit he makes on sodas are a dollar, so one times X. Profit he makes for a bag of chips is 50 cents, so plus 0.5Y needs to be greater than or equal to 30. And now if you wanna pause the video and convert each of these to slope intercept form, if you don't want to do that and you want to go back into Desmos and just graph your graph this way, that's fine too. But I'm going to convert it to slope-intercept form. 
So this first one is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 35. And the second one, when I solve for y, I get y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 60. So let's graph these. I'm going to graph the first one. I have a y-intercept of 35 and a slope of negative 1, which is going to put my y-intercept right there. Or I'm sorry, my x-intercept right there. I know it's going to be a solid line, and I'm shading above. So that's up here. Okay, let's do the next one. And then our next equation, or inequality, is y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 60. So my y-intercept is at 60, and my slope is negative 2. So you can go down 2 over 1 every single time, but what I know is that that's going to cut my y-intercept in, or my x-intercept in half. My x-intercept is going to be at 30. And like I said, if you want to graph by intercepts, you can absolutely do that as well. So since y is greater than or equal to this line, I know that my solution set is going to be up here. So I have a large solution set in that I can see in this problem, which is much easier than problem number one. So I know the solution set is the overlapping shaded region, so let's list two possible combinations. We know that x represents our sodas, because that's what we labeled. The y values represent the bags of chips. And let's see, maybe 40 and 5. That's a possible combination. 40 sodas, 5 bags of chips. That would work. Um, what about... 25 and maybe 30 up here. Would that work? That would work. 25 sodas and 30 bags of chips. That would work. So this right here, some of you might come up with some different possible combinations and that's totally fine because you obviously have an infinite number of points you could uh, plug in right there. So that concludes your notes over word problems involving systems of linear inequalities. I know this is a super difficult concept for most Algebra 1 students, uh, most students in general, um, but I hope it was helpful.